Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Collection Mania Monday and today we have all things King Art. So I have pulled out my entire selection of King Art materials and we are going to play with a little bit of each today. So this might be a little bit longer video than most of my Collection Monday videos just so you know. Another thing that I wanted to say to y'all is Thank you so much. I have reached over 1,000 subscribers. I am so out of there. You know, it's just not, uh, it's blown my mind. You have all blown my mind. Now, I will wait for a little bit and get things planned out. And we will do a bit of a live stream party where we're going to give some giveaways and that sort of thing and have some fun and color some things. So now it does take over a week for the community tab to um, to actually show up in my account so hopefully that will actually show up in time. And another thing that I was thinking about doing, um, I will talk a bit more about once the uh, monetization goes through on my account. So that, uh, and of course, you know, once I get some people lined up, because <laughs> it's, it's a big one. It's a big endeavor. But I will see how things go and, and who wants to participate and, and that sort of thing. So we'll see how that goes but for day for today we're going to talk about the king art colored arrangement coloring arrangement there's a lot of different things on my desk right now and hopefully we will get to use a little bit of each one on a couple of little pictures because we're still working on the working out of the uh, flourish book on the uh, miniatures that on the miniature page so we might end up doing one or two of these pictures depending upon how well this goes <laughs> how well they combine together and they should combine together quite well so let's talk about what's on my desk right now these are the King Art dual brush pen markers they have a brush pen a brush nib as well as a small nib. It's not a fine liner but it is a nice small nib. And these are a water-based brush and uh, they work like a marker, like a brush tip marker. They are water-based though, they're not an alcohol marker. So we're going to play with some of those. I'll move those out of the way for now. Another thing, um, and I'll get to this part in a minute here because I can't move it without get, knocking all this other stuff off the desk. These are just straight brush pens. They are a watercolor brush pen. And these have more of a fibrous uh, 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 tip to them, which can uh, fray out and whatnot if you're not careful while you're, brush while you're using it but they are a really really nice addition to your coloring and we will be playing with those as well and I have recently just reviewed these um, products so if you want to see more about the brush pens and and uh, the dual markers and the colored pencils there is a entire couple of days worth of or a couple of videos worth of King Art products. Another one which I reviewed a little while ago and I use them often is the King Art um, gel sticks. These are a, a gel crayon. Let's open up one here so I can show you. And it reminds me so much so much of uh, of lipstick. But I use these for backgrounds. I can also use them as a painting uh, medium as well with a watercolor brush. Now I will probably use them dry for a small background 
and I opened it upside down so now they're all higgly piggly hate that they come in these plastic containers and I have left them in the containers because they're a perfect little holder for them and you get a very wide variety of colors these are regular colors I do believe yeah they'll say metallic on them if they're not Let's see this one here is the metallics and we'll take a look at the swatch charts as well so that you can see what they're like so this is a red and as you can see the crayon part is here and if you just turn this it goes up like a lipstick <laughs> and down like a lipstick maybe uh oh I broke it did I break it yeah it definitely goes down like a lipstick not at all <laughs> I have had to do this with so many lipsticks and turn it down and then you push it down there we go so we will be doing a, a couple of backgrounds with those as well now on to the big one the, my favorite uh, this is the colored pencil set um, it is a 72 pencil set I do believe let me just take a peek I'm pretty sure and this is the King Art Pro colored pencil set I do have the box still out that's how how long ago I did the review on them and the update on them so this is the second set that I got the first set I got the pencils were not very nice um, they were scratchy they were off center they were crumbly and the colors the pigmentation just wasn't there for me so they sent they contacted me after my review and asked me to try them again and sent me a brand new set and these ones are wonderful um, there's no problems with these the only problem I do have is I have a duplicate color I have two of one color here somewhere and I think it was one of the blues I have to look now <laughs> I can't remember which one it was it was either a blue or a green sorry guys now I can't remember which one it was not that it's a big deal but well kinda I guess anyway I uh, I have the other set still so I will uh, go through and put the uh, extra one in I'll, I'll change it out but anyway so <laughs> it's in here somewhere I do have a duplicate and uh, I will find it I can't remember where it is now I can't I didn't mark it anywhere I should have I should have just put a little mark on it because now I can't uh, no, I can't find it. That's crazy. Huh. Maybe I just thought I had a duplicate. Maybe my brain was just, uh, you know, doing weird things to me. Okay, so we've got emerald green. Ah, there it is. The emerald greens. Or both do I have a duplicate of emerald green there it is I found it it was my brain you know playing tricks on me <laughs> so the other than that the colors and the the cores the main part of the the pencils are fantastic um, like I said I do have the um, duplicate set and I will test the greens and see if they're they're um, 
the same and switch that emerald green out. And then on top of that we have a set, a small set of the metallic as well as a small set of watercolor pencils. So we'll be playing with those as well. And I'm actually going to be right back because I sillyly forgot to grab a pen, a water pen with water in it. So I will um, do that and I will be right back. I'm going to uh, switch you over to my be right back one. Okay, well, it helps if I turn the mic back on. <laughs> I think I have everything now. So I've got a water brush here uh, with some water in it. I've got my paper towel to keep it from dribbling everywhere and some water to rinse it off. And I'm going to need one more thing. And this one. So I've also got my palette and a brush for the gel sticks so that I can do a quick background. Okay, now I think I'm ready. Are you all ready? Are you ready for this? All right. <laughs> I know, it, it's a lot. So like I said, there's going to be a lot of coloring today with everything, with all different types of mediums. So we're going to start off with the colored pencils. Actually, let's start off with, hmm, yeah, let's start off with colored pencils. Or should we start off with the watercolor and see if we can... No, we'll color with the colored pencils and then we'll add the watercolor to it and see how that goes. All right, I think I got a plan. I think there's a plan. I'm just going to move these over so that we can look at the swatch sheets. Oh, and then, and then we've got a plan. Okay, I'm going to put that there because that's what we're going to color. So these are the King Art um, gel sticks. These are the, the ones I use for backgrounds. And I've used them dry as well as wet. So I've put them up there dry and then I took a wet brush and I smoothed them out. Absolutely beautiful set of colors. 
and I just love the metallics. I use them all the time. And they're so pretty. Such pretty, pretty, pretty colors. You know, even the regular colors are still really very vibrant and very pretty. Okay, so that's the gel crayons. And then we have the brush pens and the dual brush pens. And I still haven't found my dots, so I haven't numbered these. So I will be putting them back into their case as soon as I, into their plastic holder so that I can keep them where they're supposed to be. But once again, a very vibrant uh, colored coloring on them. There's some uh, fluorescence in the brush pens that aren't in the dual brush pens. But otherwise, the dual brush pens are numbered and named, which is great. I'll switch you over to the close-up so you can see a little bit better of what I'm talking about. So as you can see, these ones are numbered and named, and they covered very nicely, didn't bleed, didn't pull up the paper, which is awesome. And then down here we have our regular brush pens. And once again, you know, they bled just a touch, but, uh, and I think that was because I was testing them with a bit of a water um, brush to see if they would move with water, and they do. But otherwise, um, you know, a great set of markers and brushes, and I expected them to move with water, I just wanted to see how much. And then we have the colored pencils. Now, I know that I, oh yeah, there they are, okay. So I know that I put them on here. <laughs> so up here we have our regular colors, uh, starting with white, and then into our lighter yellows, into our darker yellows and oranges, and then into our pale oranges, peachy colors. And then we go into a, start into a bit of a pink, a dark pink, and then into our lighter pinks, into our magenta. Um, this orange I think should be up here with number 10 and 11, um, but they've got them down here at the start of the reds. And there's a lot of red in this in this grouping. So there's ver, uh, pale vermilion, deep vermilion, carmine red. Uh, burnt Orange, Geranium Lake, Cherry, Bordeaux Red, Crimson, Maroon, Red Violet, and then into our Violets, into our Purples, um, and then into our Blues. You already saw the Blues because I didn't move it enough for you. So we've got our, our Violet into our Purples, into our Blues, and then into our Aquatic Colors. And then our greens. I'm going to zoom you out here a bit. I think you're zoomed in a little bit too much. Let's see. I'm just going to zoom you out a little bit so you can see better. Yeah, you zoomed all the way in. So There, that's a little better. That gives you a better idea. <laughs> So, into our, our greens, um, like I said, there's a really good selection of green from very light to very dark. You know, like, the only weird thing is sepia to me is not a dark green, and, and it's still a dark green <laughs> in this set. And then we go into our browns and our grays into the black. Now, these are the metallics. I'm going to turn the light on, see if you can see it. Nope, it's in the plastic cover, so you can't see it very well. But they are quite shiny. They're very metallic colored. They have a good silver metallicism to them. So I don't know if that's a word or if it's just something I just made up. So, <laughs> so we've got gold, yellow, green, green, light blue, blue, purple, violet, red, pink, bronze, silver and pewter, which is black, basically, in our metallics. And then we have our watercolors, which start off with the uh, Naples yellow, zinc, beige, 
into our pinks. The one thing about the watercolors that I'm just now noticing is there is not a red in those watercolors. Let's take a look. There's no actual red. That's weird. That can't be. Well, there's crimson, but it's showing here as a purpley color. But I didn't add water to these, so it might change with adding water to them. But yeah, there's no um, like cherry or red, red color in here. That's interesting. Did not notice it when I first started, when I first swatched them. But like I said, I haven't added water to it. So it may change with adding some water to it. We will see. But those are our colors we will be working with. And I will keep these handy because I'm going to have to pull them out. And we've got our handy dandy little sheet. Yes, uh, last Monday we did June Gold. And we used the shavings to do the background. I think it turned out pretty good. And then today we're going to do a little mushroom and maybe the little house. We'll see. I think we'll do the little house probably with the markers because it'll go really quick. And we'll do this with our pencils and our watercolor pencils. So let's start with reds because obviously we can't do the red parts with the watercolors because they don't have red in the watercolor. So we need, I think, a little bit of light orange. I don't know why these pencils are so tight in here. There's only three. There's only three in a tag and they're still really, really tight. It's very strange. And now because I've got so much on my other desk area with all of these products, I'm going to have to sharpen on this desk. Alright, so we've got our light orange and we're going to put in our, our spots. And we don't really need to do this because there are dots there, but I'm leaving those dots white. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Maybe I'll zoom you in for this part. Move you over. Other way. Other way. And move you down. There we go. There you are. There. Now you can see what I'm doing better. And this will be a good test on whether or not the colored pencils themselves are water resistant if we use a watercolor pencil on you know, with them as well. If we get a movement with the reds and oranges, let's say when we do a window or, you know, maybe I'll do this one watercolor and this one not. That sort of thing. And then we're going to take our um, geranium lake. I do believe is the one I want. And like I said, they are a really nice pencil. Um, I would, I just think I had well, the first cent I got was just a really bad production set. Um, and hopefully they were, they didn't have too many of those. 
but the first set I had was horrible. It was well, it wasn't horrible. The the colors were there. It was nice and and pretty on some of the colors. There's still a couple of colors that I think are just not the right color, like indigo. I don't think indigo is the right color, but that's a personal opinion. So, you know, everybody, uh, every set has differences in their pigmentation and their colorization and their naming. So. They are a layering pencil. I, I don't think I would suggest doing a heavy hand with them because they're quite hard. So you would end up really killing the tooth of the paper. I'm just going to go into this orange here a little bit more. Cover it up and make it a bit of a ready orange on this area. Like I said, after I get the first layer down and then add another layer, it should uh, fill in and become a little bit brighter of a red, less of a pinky color. Because it looks very pale right now. But I'm just doing a very light layer. Now I'm going to go back this way. And I'll come back to this area up top after. And this is Geranium Lake, so it does have a little bit of a pink to it. I'm actually going to just finish this off and then we'll grab a bit of a darker red and do the shadows and whatnot. And then we'll come back and see if it needs a different layer of the geranium lake or if it d needs a different color because I've got a couple more colors left to put on here so all right so there's the geranium lake now we're going to grab uh, maroon shadow area. And I'm just moving in little tiny circles, just getting that color brought in a little bit. And like I said, I'll go back over it just to darken up that red with a bit of a brighter red color because I think that geranium lake is a little bit more pink than I wanted. I grabbed the wrong thought. Okay, so in this corner here I'm going to do a little bit wider and then down here I'm going to just do a little bit into that yellow orange color and then a little bit down here on the edges. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to go right across the bottom here. We're going to color that area a different color, but I just wanted to put in the shadow. Now this side here has a little bit more of a shadow because this plant. So we're going to do that. Now we're going to take our navy blue, I think is the d deepest blue we have. 
No, Delph Blue is deepest. If I can find it. There we go. Delph Blue. Normally I would do this with Indigo, but like I said, the Indigo in this set is not what I would consider Indigo. Indigo. And don't you be breaking on me. And then down here, where it's got that deep shadow, we're just going to add a little bit of this Delph Blue into that red. And bring it out a little bit. And we can do the same thing over here for those really, really corner edges there and where the chimney is. Okay, now we're going to go through with another red because I don't think I like that geranium lake red. Uh, let's do cherry uh, carmine. Yeah, I think that's the one I want. No, carmine's not quite. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, half a dozen of one, half a dozen of the other. There's Bordeaux. There's Red Violet. What's this one? Crimson. So this one's got to be Cherry. So we're going to do Cherry. I think with the geranium lake behind it, it'll still be a nice bright color, not a dark. I do apologize, it seems my phone's going off. Hold on one second. Uh, They can leave a message. I'm getting a lot of unknown name, unknown number calls today. They started at like 7 o'clock this morning. Alright, yeah, that's the color I want. So as you can see, I'm just using a really light hand, putting in this cherry red on top of the crimson, and it's just filling it out really nicely. It's covering up all that white spot, and it's just blending it all together, including the darker red and the uh, blue. Just polishing it up which is great. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Now this is a very small picture, so you're not going to get as much um, chance to... What's the words I'm looking for? Uh, this is the largest area of the picture. So in these really small detail areas, um, you know, if you put down two or three or four colors, you're not going to notice a whole lot the differences in the color. But on this larger area, you can definitely see the difference with those with that color change going from that crimson into this cherry red. I 
I think it did a pretty good job in deepening that color. Now if I wanted to deepen that color even more, I could go over it again. And I might in a few areas where I want a bit more of a shadow, like around the window here. Because I want it to look like it's inset a bit. And of course I could do this with the blue as well and just uh, inset that window a bit more. Now normally I would do it a bit yellow around the window but I'm not going to put a light on in this one so I'm just going to do it a daytime window because I'm going to use the blue from the gel sticks for the background so I'm not going to have any lights on. It's just going to be a, a window. And since I am not going to have any lights on in the background there, I'm going to take the um, Geranium Lake and I'm just going to gently go in here and fill that in like it's the wall of the inside of the mushroom. I'm not going to make it really dark but and then we're going to take the carmine and just add a couple of shadows. So as you can see in this small, small area, you're not going to get a lot of shadow ability. You'll get a little bit, but if you go too far, you're going to end up covering your entire area with the, the shadow color and you don't want that. So I'm just going to blend that in. And that's all done. Alright, now we're going to do the base in a light brown. Uh, I think we're going to go with uh, Viridian Red, I do believe. Yeah, no, Venetian Red is what it's called. Uh, so, Venetian Red. Once again, I got to give it a sharpen. And we're just going to go into this area here underneath. And we're going to color in this area here. And I've got the hiccups again. I don't know why I get the hiccups so much. Well, I do know why I get the hiccups so much. I just really wish it wouldn't. Okay, and I think we're going to do a nice bright color because we've covered some reds, we've color, covered some oranges, some browns, and we're going to add a nice bright uh, pink up here to the curtains. I know with the red the pink really doesn't go, but that's alright. It's alright. Now I'm just going to blend that red line in a bit for those shadows. I should have done the pink door and the blue curtains. 
and a nice blue door. So we're going to take some indigo. Sharpen this up. What color is it that I? Oh, it was cobalt blue. That wasn't the right one. Indigo is fine. It's cobalt blue that is too light. I was gonna say because that looks awfully dark to me. Just taking the indigo and. Going back over the darker areas because that, even though that other blue is really dark, indigo just has a property to it that just makes this look like a, a shadow on the mushroom. I don't know what it is. There's just something about indigo's color that does that. But it was the cobalt blue that is not as dark as I would expect it to be. It's really light. And that's what we're using here is the cobalt blue. Now we're going to go in here and add a bit of that blue to the window. And we'll do a little slash slash so that it looks like a window but I could actually take the indigo and go around the edge so that it looks like a blue in the window like I said the wind the lights are off. It's not a lit house. So. Now we're going to use some metallic up here on the chimney. So we've got, let's see, we've got pewter and we've got silver and uh, pink. Let's see, bronze. Well, let's do a little bit of bronze. Well, no, let's just stick to the pewter and the silver. Just so that we're not mucking around with stuff. So a little bit of pewter in first. To those little shadowy areas. And like I said, these are really, really small areas. So unless you're pencil is really really sharp you may not be able to add those as many of those shadows as you want or as many of those details as you want in such a small area with more than one or two pencils okay so there's our metallics and then we're going to do this yeah, we're going to do this one in some, should we do this one in metallics and the, hmm, yeah, I'm going to do this one in metal, <clears throat> in metallics as well. And then we're going to actually do the grass and the flowers in the uh, watercolor and then we'll do the background as well with the crayons which will blend with water as well. So I'm just going to take some gold. So this should actually look kind of cool. And we're going to go in with the metallic red. to sharpen my metallic red.
Give it a bit of a sharpen. Just going to cover the whole area with the metallic red. All right, and then we're going to take our bronze. We're going to do a bit of the um, because there is no copper in this little set that I have. I know the bigger set has copper, but, but this has bronze, which will work. Just going to deepen that red a little bit on the edges. So pretty much trying to stick to the same concept as we did with the um, large mushroom here. However, this one doesn't have a door, so we're just going to bring that down. I do apologize. Just one moment. some reason my dog has decided that she needs to be very loud. So now we have metallic blue. And we're just going to go in and give those shadows. Shyla, that's enough. Sorry about that. I don't know if there's somebody at the door. Or they haven't knocked or anything. It's just she hears noises outside. And she thinks that she needs to be loud. Sorry about that, guys. Alright, so there's our little golden metallic little mushroom going on there. I'm just going to blend some of this gold into it. All right, now well, let's see how that looks. Because it's very, very metallic-y. So, let's see. Ooh, shiny. Is that rainbow shiny? And you guys can't see a darn thing because of the light. I'm trying to show you, but the light's too bright. Oh, it's just too bright. So, there. Maybe you can see it. Nope. Can't see the metallic shiny. Sorry, guys. It says no. <laughs> but it's all metallic shiny, just so you know. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our watercolor pencils. And we're going to get some dark pink and some light pink. So we've got dark fuchsia and rose pink. Give them a quick sharpen. Now with these very, very tiny areas, I don't know how much of it is going to uh, just take over the other color. So I will try to be very sparing with it. And uh, 
hopefully, I'll go from light to dark and hopefully it won't just completely take over the dark, take over the light once the water hits it. I should leave a wider light uh, empty area for those colors to blend into but this is so small it's so hard to do all right so where is my there it is uh, don't unscrew it let's take the lid off all right get that water flowing Don't want a dry brush. All right, so we're gonna go. Ooh, that works really nicely. And I should have gotten a smaller brush. Here, let's try this. This brush is a little too big. Um, let's try this one. It might be small enough. Helps if I put water on it, doesn't it? I was worried about that. This is my um, Turpinex Turpinoid brush, so I was worried that the water wouldn't absorb into it, and it doesn't want to, but does look like the pencil is moving quite nicely and not bleeding too much out except for that one spot that I went out of the lines so let's go back in with the there we go let's see if I can find a really tiny tiny little brush I know I have some in here that are really small. Somewhere. Somewhere in this mess of brushes I have, I have a small brush. Somewhere. <laughs> it's always somewhere, isn't it? Um, that's too big. These are all too big. Maybe this one will work. This one's pretty small. Let's try this one. Now this is a water brush, but it's not got any water in it. So I'm going to see if I can pull some water out of the glass for it. No. Don't work that way. This one's pretty small. Let's see if it moves this. I guess it helps if I wipe off the previous uh, colors. So the red does move. I didn't think they were supposed to. Pretty sure that Grant told me that they were waterproof. They don't move a whole lot, but I did see movement there. All right, so let's take our green. And we have, let's not flip that out everywhere. Let's do this green because these are really, really small. I'm just going to do a small amount and try to blend it into the rest of the, the leaf. I 
some of these leaves are really really tiny so all right so now we're going to take our pen I'm just going to get it some water rinse off any of that red Pull that green out to the ends. And it seems to work with very little water, which is great. It works quite well with very little water. Then we're going to take this lighter green here. We're going to do our ground. And then we're going to let it dry for a bit. And we'll go over to this one over here and we'll do the King Art markers on it. And we'll let this dry. And then we'll do a background on it. with the uh, with the gel sticks so I think it turned out pretty good other than the areas that I now let's see I would like to know is that dry yet yeah it is I would like to know if doing something like that where you get that little bit of runoff if you could use the eraser like I have my electric eraser here I see if I can use the electric eraser and take that out. Nope, it's pretty much in there. About over here. So that's weird. The watercolor pencil seems to be erasing a lot easier than the pencil that wasn't supposed to be watercolor after the water hit it. Interesting. Learn something new every day. Wonder why. I'm just going to dust that off because we don't need remnants all over. And I didn't put a lot of water down for those watercolor areas, so they're all pretty much dry at this point. So, okay, so those are the colored pencil ones. So I'm going to close those up. I'll put them all away afterwards, but right now I'm just going to close them up and move them off the desk. Now we're going to move over to this cute little house here. And I'm going to try to keep these ones all together so that I don't lose the order. So I'm just going to grab a bit of green. Let's grab the right color chart here. So I need, so from the end of the blues, this one, this one. This one I think is the one we want. This one for and then the next one for some highlights. So as you can see it's a brush. It's a very fine tipped paint brushed style. And you use it just like you would a paintbrush with little flicks. If you do too much you end up getting a lot of ink on the page, a lot of watery 
watercolor ink on the page and you can end up with peeling of the page and oversaturation and that sort of thing. And these will move with water so if you just wanted to do the edge and pull that in with a water brush you could definitely do that and we'll probably do that with one of these other trees just to see how that works. And just like with the colored pencils and every other medium, the more layers you do, the darker it gets. So I'm just doing the base area of the tree here a little bit darker. Where it's going to be a little more shadowed. And we're going to put that back in there so I don't lose where it is. And then we're going to take this darker green, or lighter green, I mean, and we're going to go in and see about adding a little bit of brightness. Now one of my biggest pet peeves with watercolor pens and watercolor markers is see all that line you can definitely see different little lines in there. That drives me crazy. And I know there's uh, glycerin that I can put down first. I just haven't played with it enough to really get a good sense of it. So now this one here I'm going to do in a lighter green. In the lighter green. And then we will put the dark green on top of it and see if we can blend it with the water. So I get all the little areas covered. Okay, and then we're going to take a slightly darker green. Actually, I want to do the next one, this one. And we're just going to come into these shadow areas. And as you can see, it just blends into each other quite nicely. But we've still got that harsh line there. So we're going to take our water brush here. Make sure we've got a good dollop of wet on it. And we're just going to see about blending those lines together. And that worked quite well to blend that in and just give a bit of a shadow line, not a hard line. Let's see if we can blend some of those lines out here. Just be careful that you don't put too much water on it. Otherwise you're going to get a pilling of the paper and a raise of the paper. There's already going to be a raise of the paper because this is a watercolor product. You don't really want to make it even more of a raised area because of the water itself. Now I missed a couple of spots there. So I'm just going to touch them up. Alright, now we're going to take our dark, medium dark green over here. We're going to do this little fella way over here. Now we're going to 
add a little bit of the really dark green to it. And those little those little areas and then we're going to take our light green and we're just going to do this because the light from the house is going to be touching it like that and then we're going to take our brown that's what we want so from the green two three these alone. Now these are very, very thin. Little areas. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to take I think this one and we're going to do a couple of little flicks for the grass here. And then we're going to take this alone and do a couple of little darker flicks not a whole lot I'm not going to go too much into this because I'm going to use the other markers into it as well okay so I know we've only used the greens and the browns in these markers but we still have a whole other set of markers that we need to use so what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the other markers and we're going to use bright colors out of these other markers for the house so let's grab uh, let's see um, which one's this one I don't know why that one's there and that one's there so we're going to use bright yellow. And as you can see, this is a much harder, stiffer, I guess would be the best word. It's not really hard. Marker-like nib instead of a flicky little brush. And that's the difference between the two, really, is the little brushes does have a lot more flexibility than this marker nib. So we've got our dark yellow down. Let's make sure we do our there we go. Do our shadow line. And then we're going to take our lemon yellow I'm just going to blend that in together. Just like other markers, uh, when you want the brightness to take over a little bit of the dark, just go over top of it a little bit. Let it bleed together. Let it move together. And it will uh, smooth itself right out. And then we're going to take, so there's bright yellow, lemon yellow, and I think we're going to give it a nice red door. So we've got red, <laughs> and then we've got red brick. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to put down the red brick around the edges where we want that shadowing to be because it's an inset door. And 
and then we're going to take our red just like that and I missed a spot Now the very tip of these are very very fine so they're not as fine as the brush nibs but the tips of these are quite fine. Fine enough that uh, you can get into those little tiny areas. Now this is a little bit finer and a little bit more controllable. So this is the opposite side. This is the nib end and we're just going to do the roof in port red and as you can see it works more uh, more as a marker in this in than the brush tip ones work more like a paintbrush And now we're going to blend it in a little bit with some water and show you how it works with water. So as you can see it definitely moves with the water and you just blend it right in together. Just taking some of the water off my brush because I don't want it to be too too watery otherwise the colors will bleed together and we don't want this red to bleed into the yellow but it definitely blends it well it removes any kind of lines that sort of thing all right and of course it's bleeding shoot Okay, well, lesson learned. <laughs> if you're going to use the water on it, wait until it's dry. <laughs> All right, so it, it's a, uh, this should be interesting. I'm going to watch it and see how long it takes it to spread across the entire house. Very, very cool. So we're going to do the windows. Let's put all these reds back now that we're all done completely making a mess. And we'll do the windows and then we'll let it dry for a sec and we'll do the other sides. Um, background. I know this one, this one has been a lot longer than I normally go. Oh, I've got to do the chimney too. Alright, I need... I need a gray for the chimney. And for the cloud of smoke. Or I should say plume smoke. Now with the lesson that we just learned down below, we know this is going to bleed. So I'm going to just do that in the dark there. I'll wipe down the brush and we'll just bring that down into here. And let it fill itself in maybe. Just like that. I can go back into it with the light and just give a couple little touches for those areas that aren't 
quite filled in. Because the dark is running out of the lines. Like I said, it's a really, really small area. So if you use too much water, you're going to have issues. Okay, so the grass we're going to do in this where I had a grass green. I know there's a grass green in here. Is it this one? It's light green. Kelly green. It's avocado. Let's just do it light green. And I'm just doing little movements, giving little flicks of that grass. Letting it do its own thing. And then we'll take the water brush and we'll just bring it down a little bit. Smooth it out. Areas that are I'm telling you the adding that bit of moisture to the page just helps it kind of blend around and move around. I really like the um, tip that Tammy gave of the, and she learned it from somebody else, of this brush where I have a 50-50 solution of water and uh, glycerin because it keeps the ink from drying too quickly so you can play with it a little bit more. This ink seems to just play on its own so <laughs> okay so we've got this done and we're going to let it dry this is all dry over here so we're going to take our blue let's see which blue should we go with the metallic blue or the pale blue? Let's do the pale blue first and then we'll add a little bit of metallic blue. So let's do that first. I think the pale blue is in here. Yep, there it is. So we'll do the pale blue and then we'll do the metallic light blue or metallic blue on top of it and give it that bit of movement you know the darker areas all right so let's do that let's grab our metallic blue as well I've got this upside down so here's our metallic blue and I could go with the darker metallic blue, but I think this one's dark, so so much more dark than this one, that it's going to give us a good contrast. Okay, so we got the palette here, and we're going to put this marker back where it belongs. All right, so what we do is we take our palette, and we make a mess. No. <laughs> we scribble on 
some of this wonderful gel. And now you can either do this with a paint pen or a paint brush or you can do it dry. I'm going to do it dry. And I'm just going to do a very quick dry background. Now that is a lot of um, crayon or gel so I'm just going to take a little bit of it for now and see if you get little chunks like that just give it a rub in. Make sure that you don't end up with little chunks otherwise you're going to end up with streaks. And we'll add more if we need more. Like I said this is a small small area and we're going to need more because that's really pale, really pale blue. Okay, so we've got our pale blue down and we'll even go in between because I'm going to do it over there too. I just want it to dry first. It's fairly dry. Let's see how much I can get off this brush. I think I need a little bit more than that. Now this is almost a gray blue. It's really, really, really pale. Okay, so we've got the blue down. Then we're going to take the metallic blue, which is a brighter blue, and we're going to put it down on the on the palette. And we're going to scoop it all up with our brush, break up any sort of chunks. Make sure you break up those chunks. If you have chunks like this one here, you're going to have a streak with that chunk if you don't break it up. And just rub it on your palette until it's all broken up. And then just go in. like that. And those are all, and I mean all, of the King Art instruments that I have in my collection. I'm just going to wipe those. I'm just going to quickly go over them. Because the gel pen, or the gel crayon I mean, is a water color. You can use it with water. I can clean these up. I'm amazed that these are moving with water so much. Clean them up a little bit with just a bit of a water and have those colors come back up. Alright guys, I know this has been a long one. I do apologize and I know that you probably won't watch it all the way to the end. But I wanted to say thank you very much for watching if you have made it all the way to the end. And I hope you enjoyed my use of the many things of King Art. Have a wonderful day. Always remember to relax, color and stay safe. Thank you all very much for the subscribership. I do appreciate reaching over that 1000 mark. I can't wait until we get the community tab going and all the different things that we have available to us now. I do appreciate it, every little bit of it. Of course, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel and you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I put out a new video every day. I'm live except for Sundays and I'm live Saturday and Wednesday. So if you want to hang out and chat, want to do some color alongs, want to watch some videos on different things in my collection or uh, different things that I've learned along the way, 
hit the subscribe button because I do put those out quite often. Well, every week. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you want to join me over on Facebook, please do. Just fill out the application form and we will get you in there as quickly as possible. Um, other than that, I will see you tomorrow for Tips and Tricks Tuesday where we're going to work on some kitty fur and we're going to figure out how to do a cat's fur. Till then, thanks so much for watching. Remember, of course, relax, color, and stay safe. Bye-bye for now, guys.